Hey guys, um, the call is being made to the wedding. Jesus prepared the table. The wedding feast is there. Everything's arranged. He's calling. I've never really read Matthew 20. I mean, I've heard about it for years. 38 years ago, honestly, started, you know. Got saved in the 80s. Early 80s. So, but I just about six months ago, I really read it. So I really read it with some depth, guys. I was guilty of just glossing over it. Maybe you aren't. I was. But there's a part in there about making light. How they made light of it. You know, we want to, we want the wedding to be how we want it. We want the best seat in the house. We want the food a certain way. We want the date. We want to pick the date, the time, the place, the venue, all that stuff. Part of what's going on in this world right now. We want to create God and God created us. That manna that fell from heaven, guys, it probably they probably didn't have garlic butter. They probably didn't want like Subway where they had they might have had five different flavors of bread. But it still was provision from heaven. So he's got a seat assigned for you at the wedding. Are you gonna go? Are you gonna show up? Many of it took it lightly and just ignored it. That's why the Bible says, He that had not hear the ear will let him hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. Many are called, but a few are chosen. We're all called, guys, but are we going to go? Or are we going to ignore it, the purpose of God, and try to recreate it to fit, to fit our needs? It's that Hollywood Christianity, guys, that I call it the Captain Crunch Christianity. There was a thing on there about, on Facebook about lucky charms and we just want to make it magically appear and the Captain Crunch Christianity is I liked Captain Crunch as a, as a kid smell good look good tasted good in a cool box when I was a kid sometimes you got a prize no no nutritional value guys is actually bad for you all the sugar and stuff worthless to your body actually harmful to you So, who's your source? That river of living water? Are we getting the polluted, diluted truth? And the reason why I'm going down this path, guys, is just because it's happening fast, okay? I wasn't the only one. Go look, look, at, one, look at my Twitter feed because there's some stuff on there I was censored from one of the social media platforms for quoting some scriptures. There was another one on there today. Same thing. When we stand for the truth and come up against sin and idols, plenty of them, guys, that's part of what's coming out. It, it, I don't know why I want to say today, but the Lord keeps dealing with me about December 1st. This dream I had, because he's already added to it several times. Several dreams, some visions about a storm coming to America, guys. These all these storms are just preludes, you know, even though they're, they're natural, they're just preludes to what's coming, guys. It's going to be a choose time, choice time. Part of what I can tell you is <clears throat> he wants us to choose. Correction. Our direction for our protection instruction 
or destruction. No, that's not nice. It's not. A, it doesn't give you a warm, fuzzy feeling. But there's still good news in it, guys. He's calling us to the wedding. A feast prepared, table in splendor. In my father's house are many mansions. If it wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. There's a lot of good news, guys. But we're drifting away from it because we're in this selfish realm. Like I said, we're trying to create God. Put him in a box, fit our needs. Not the fast food Christianity, you know, the Captain Crunch in a box, whatever, you know. I mean, I'm just... just I know that's sounds stupid but it's out there guys it's time your source should be God Jesus the Holy Ghost and his word not even me man go to your go to your uh, Google feed and look what's all on there guys nothing Really, it is full of idols. We're his voice, Isaiah 60. It's time to rise and shine as a church, as his body. And I'm just gonna be his voice, guys. I'm not trying to be abrasive, abusive, or abuse anything, or take anything out of text, or granted, or, you know. And if I'm in air a little bit, that's why I got a blog page, and there's also a comment section on here. Um, you can email me at Jesus is alive in America at gmail.com. Uh, you can go to Jesus is alive in America.com. That's where our website is. It's on Wix. It's a little lame, guys. I really could use some help, but it's what I could do right now. Kind of on a shoestring budget a little bit, plus on a technical shoestring budget. I did the best I could, guys. I, I, just, I just don't. It goes kind of over my head, and I'm, you know, so yeah, I could use some help, but I also could use your prayers a lot, and I could use your story a lot. A really close friend, or I became close friends over the last couple of years, this was his story. Crack pipe in his hand. God, I'm tired of this life. I'm hoping to get him to share his story. He was behind a dumpster, guys. He said, God, I can't do this anymore. Help me. He fell asleep. And he woke up. And there was a couple guys from a ministry here in Dallas called Men of Nehemiah. So I guess you can look them up. It's not menofnehemiah.org is their website, but ministered to him, brought him to the Lord. That's his testimony. He said God didn't meet him in a building. Met him behind a dumpster. Guys, when we throw away trash, we think our lives are, are, are trashed because of sin. And a lot of them are. Because of poor choices and things, you know, a lot of the stuff we created, guys. But instead, we're trying to kind of hoodwink God and create this box movement, this revival, this building, this place, this ministry, this platform, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, I don't know, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, didn't want to do any of them, guys, none of them. My platform seems to be 7-Eleven, guys, and because I deal with a lot of homeless people. For whatever reason, I deal with a lot of broken people. And so it's like, man, I don't go there like all the time, but it just seems to be like a magnet where I run into these people. And I can see it out. It's the first question I usually ask them, are they hungry? And then I buy them something. And then I don't buy them a 99-cent bag of chips or not such thing anyhow. But, you know, I buy them, you know, Ten, twelve, fifteen dollars worth of just you know peanuts and sandwiches and a couple drinks and a bottle of water and a, you know what do you want? I don't want him to think that God's a cheapskate because He's not. And then I give him the word, I minister to him. 
So it's time to get the word out, guys. It's time to go to the, you know, what's he calling you? What's your seat at the wedding? Come prepared. The end of it, it talks about a man that came without a garment on, got kicked out. Read it, guys. Read it with some depth. It's there. It's calling. Calling us. Because, man, things are spinning pretty fast, guys. That's one of the scriptures I put out there on a lot of stuff. A lot of this stuff on, on different things on Facebook and Twitter and just wherever. Got it about a month ago. The Lord said, go to Isaiah 27. I was sitting there thinking, I'm in with this. Sitting there thinking, man, there's a lot of stuff going on. I see a lot of people getting attacked, seemingly in the natural. Cars breaking down, finances, careers, jobs, relationships, divorces. Things of life, you know, of course. They can go wrong. But it just seemed like it was on steroids, kind of, you know. Just look around. That's why I don't watch the news anymore. I cut it off, actually. I cancel my, my subscription to the TV. Just to kind of try so I can kind of pick and choose a little bit more precisely what I want to, what I want to watch. Not nothing to do with, you know, calling it fake news or anything. I just don't want a bunch of pollution, guys. It's coming from all different directions. Pick one. So, Isaiah 27, it's about twisted serpent and that's where we're at guys the truth is being twisted whether it's in the church youtube the body the internet preachers teachers the world of course people are twisting it to fit their needs wants desires well, I said, who's your source? Don't, I mean, you don't have to listen to me. Bounce it off, of, bounce it off of God. Bounce it off of Jesus. Bounce it off the Holy Ghost. Bounce it off of his word. That was the whole point of Jesus, guys. You have a direct, you have a direct access to God himself. You can come boldly before the throne of grace. But it's got to be through Jesus. He's got to be your why and in your heart. I put that out there on one of the comments. I'm, I forget which media it was on, but why? Why are you doing what you do? Why are you not coming to the wedding? Or why are you coming to the wedding? Why, 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 why? Jesus hanging on the cross knew why. It's a quote by Ronald Reagan. It's, I forget what it was, but it's on one of my feeds. But um, he didn't say hanging there on the cross. He didn't say, do you know who I am? No, he didn't. He didn't call down angels to destroy every, everybody. No, he didn't. Because he knew why he was there. Nothing to do with all the accusations and the innuendos and all the twistedness and all the anger and wrath. And what did he say? Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Why are you doing what you're doing? No more, no more baloney, guys. And there's even other words for it. You know what I'm saying? Enough's enough. Let's tell the truth. And the truth is there's a wedding being that's been prepared for us. The bride's coming back. We're the bride. I mean, sorry, he's coming back for his bride. The call's being made. Five wise and the five foolish. Are you going to go? Are you going to show up? Or do you got things to do? Your own creation. God in a box. Your Captain Crunch Christianity. Your st stuff. Because it fits you. The ravens that felt the fed the prophets. The manna from heaven. The, man, God, guys. Your seat is assigned and prepared for you. But are you going to sit there? What's your purpose? What's God telling you to do? 
for whatever reason, he deals with me in dreams and visions. And man, I used to, man, I used to, for a while there, it kind of got to me because I was looking for man's approval, sort of. Not anymore. And I'm not trying to be, you know, antagonistic or anti-authority or any of that or against anybody. But we have to be a body. We're his body, fitly framed together, guys. We're not the head, yet we are. He says we're the head, not the tail. But he's the head of the body. So where's your source coming from? Where are you getting this information from? Where are you getting this stuff? Matthew says about the about our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, that kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May not even like it, guys. It might not even, you know, that's why it says, lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. Don't direct your paths. Why are people, why is Mike Pence and other people saying it's prevalent? <clears throat> Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Old Testament. I'm going to throw this out there, guys. My people are called by my name. Less than a month ago, I was sitting there in my prayer chair. It's four in the morning. You guys weren't there. Nobody was there. My life wasn't up. It was just me and my dog. Nothing. Nobody. Jesus appeared before me. And he spoke really loud, it seemed like, but it was with authority. I got it on YouTube too, I'm not trying to... He said, my name is Jesus, and at the sound of my name, every knee will bow. And he stopped there, and I know the rest of the scripture, but he stopped there. But it was like, man, it was almost like it was really loud, guys, but yet it wasn't. crazy and you know I don't have some you know people say I mean I've heard all kinds of stuff your imagination and stuff like that it's not my imagination guys I don't have some secret friend living in my shed behind my house and neither do you if you want it if you choose it if you come to the wedding if you listen to what the Spirit's saying to the church and quit listening to this world and Google as our God or whatever. You know, there's all these idols. Man, it, there's a storm coming, guys, to this country first. And I'm going to put it out there, the dream on, on the first, because he's still adding to it. There's still more to these dreams. There's still things coming in. So it's, he's not finished yet. That's why I can't say anything. Want to? And I'll end with this. It's not me, guys. It's in the Bible, 1 Peter 1, 20 and 21. There's no secret interpretation, no secret revelation, no secret sauce. I don't know the recipe to KFC, and you don't, and you don't know it. And then a boo-boo, stick your head in the doo-doo. Probably not preacher friendly, but oh well. I'll, yeah, I probably do need to clean some of that stuff up, but I apologize for that, guys, but you get the point. So, I'm more like Larry the Cable Guy, just get her done, but, you know, maybe you're the polished guy or woman too, you know? Don't take this, don't take it lightly, don't take the Bible, don't take the Word, don't take what God's showing you, don't take your purposes, don't don't try to shove it into something that's not created and fit your, fit your world. Says we're not of this world, we're peculiar people. What's he telling you guys? Do it. So anyhow, we love you guys. Um, you can, you know, blog with us, Jesus is alive in america.com on wix and it's a little kind of a little lame guys honestly but i'm trying okay so not that wix is lame it's an okay site it's just me you know i don't know how to do it yet i'm still kind of trying to figure it out i could really use some help if you're here in dallas come come see me email me at jesus alive in america gmail.com you know blog comment um i want to hear your story 
Facebook has exploded on me, guys. I answered a couple of emails from overseas, and man, I got almost a thousand friends, and it's pretty challenging right now, guys. A little bit. I'm working on. I'm doing the best I can right now. Really, honestly, I'm really plowing into it, spending a lot of time, and it's like, man, God, okay, okay, okay. But that's where He's got me at. But it's your story he wants to get out. We're his story and his glory. So anyhow, I also got out two books. The second, the second one, you know, uh, it's on there, free ebook. Um, I got it on an email version. It's called Jesus Christ in You, the Hope of Glory. Just email me and I'll send you a copy. Or it's on Amazon. How oh, we're his glory, we're his story. <laughs> and the world's trying to get us to, to shut down, shut up. Shrink back. And God's saying, come on to the wedding. It's prepared. Are you ready? For the wedding? So anyhow, we love you guys. Um, so I just, you know, I want to hear from you guys. Your story is important. Like I said about my friend. God met him at a dumpster. That's an awesome story, guys. But so is yours. Email it to me, you know, I'd be glad to, you know, look at it, maybe probably even post it or whatever, you know, let's talk. Because that's the importance of it is his body, the hand and the feet working together under one head. And it's not, the head is not some apostle or prophet or pastor or evangelist or me or anybody else, it's Jesus. Sorry, guys. Time for people in the ministry to get over themselves, me included. Doesn't make us any greater than, than anybody else. Just I'm just a directional guy, just the purpose that he has me for. You could be the... Uh, and I, I will end with this, okay? Long story, but... We ended up in Pennsylvania, 2,000 miles away. Long story, same thing in prayer. Lord told us to go, gave me a city and everything. It was just a divine setup. But we're on our way there, Tennessee, Jackson, Tennessee, six in the morning, ministering to some guy, because that's what I would do. I would just go down and pray outside of the hotels or wherever we stayed. I said, Lord, I'm not going to look for people. You send them to me. And he did everywhere I went. ministered to this guy, but you know what? This guy ministered to me, and he hadn't even been in church in almost over three years, and he got hurt really bad by the church, and he was just, you know, he still had a look, you could still tell. I ministered to him, but he ministered to me too, and he wasn't even in church. Imagine that, guys. I took it in, and man, it was pretty profound. It was some good godly stuff. So, I don't know, we don't know. So, but the call's being made. Are you going to come in and come into the wedding? Or do you have, do you, do you have houses, lands, cars, jobs, whatever stuff to do? Are you too busy? Are you just, even on the internet or whatever, what are we going to do in this country if we lose power? Imagine that. So, anyhow, there is a storm coming, guys. But there's a wedding too. So where are you gonna go? Choose. What are you gonna do? Go to the wedding? Or try to ride out the storm. So love you. Um, see you soon. Uh, just like I said, just you know, man, I need your story, guys. I need your feedback. I need your comments. I need to hear from you. Because that's the direction he's telling me to go, is to get the word out, but not just me, but to get people's stories out. So that's what this is all about. I'm kind of in the infancy stage. I don't matter if I get big, don't get big. I don't really want to. I want to stay behind the scenes as much as possible. The world needs to hear your story. It's time to rise and shine. as his body.
if you're the eyes you're supposed to see that doesn't make any better than the ears or that doesn't make any better than the hand or the feet and with this don't believe me plenty of scripture but read Matthew 20 just read it read it with out of your heart with the depth of your heart he wants to direct this guy he's calling us come to the wedding come on put on your best what she's already provided for us a robe of righteousness dipped in the blood of the lamb covered in the blood of the lamb Come prepared. Lay aside everything. So anyhow, love you guys. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. I can't, it's not, that's no different for me than it is for you. That's what people in the ministry need to get over themselves on. <laughs> this high horse better than there's a lot to it, guys. There's a lot more to that. It hurts. Some of the stuff that the Lord showed me, it hurts. I guess I guess the reason why it hurts, I'm gonna end with I am gonna end with this, is that they're in a position of responsibility and they've got souls that God's given them direction to lead. But they're not the head. He's the head. So you can't just spit out loosely what you think, opinions, or any of that stuff. Are we going to get some of it in air? Of course. Me too. That's why I said, you know, comment, email me. If I need correction, let's hear it. I just want to be his directional vessel. That's just what he called me to be. So I could use some help. Yeah, of course. I could use a lot of prayer. Maybe with some balancing of the scripture. I don't know. I'm willing to be obedient, though. So are you coming to the wedding? Come on, let's go. It's calling. Love you guys. See ya.